Okay, so welcome to the last part of today's lecture on complex numbers. One of the things we just saw in the last part was about how to plot the points. And here's a little uh, comic here. Hopefully you find it funny talking about complex numbers when you're plotting it. I'll give you a second to read that before we start talking about the last topic. Okay, so hopefully you're laughing right now. Now, the last part, what we want to do is talk about matrices of complex numbers. So first of all, what we want to do is generalize the notion of Rn, and we can actually talk about Cn. Okay, so Cn is going to be the set of all vectors with n entries. So it's like an it's an n by one matrix where we're allowing the entries now not to just be real numbers, but they can be any complex number that we want. So this is n tuples of complex numbers. So we're generalizing for Rn to Cn. And a complex matrix is a matrix where we're allowing both complex and real numbers. Okay, so is a matrix with real and uh, real and complex numbers. Okay, so as an example, I have a very two simple examples here. We have the matrix 2 plus i, i4, and then we have negative 1, 2i, and 4 plus 6i. So I have a 2 by 3 matrix. And you can also talk about vectors. Okay, You can think of vectors as complex uh, matrices as well. right? So we have 3 plus 2i, and 1, and 0. So these are both examples of complex matrices. And now what we can do is start kind of combining some of the terms and operations we, have, we learned about to matrices. So we can take the conjugate of a matrix or a conjugate of a vector. And what we do in those cases is we take the conjugate of each entry. So if I use the same matrix as before, so I want to take the conjugate of A, I'm taking the conjugate of each part of my matrix. So I have 2 minus i, minus 1, negative i, negative 2i, 4, and 4 minus 6i. So while you're, while you're looking at that, let's just, I don't know if I can get both of them on here. But so this becomes 2 minus i, that becomes minus i. 4 and negative 1, they don't change because they're real numbers. This becomes negative 2i and 4 minus 6i. And you can do it for our vector u. So let me do it for my vector u as well. So I would get the vector 3 minus 2i and 1 and 0. You can also talk about the real part of a uh, and the imaginary part of a. Right. So this is real part of your matrix A, and this is the imaginary part of A. And what you have is that you have A is equal to the real part of A plus the imaginary part of A. And I, I apologize, I didn't really leave myself enough room to do this, but it should be 2, 0, 4, minus 1, 0, 4, plus all the imaginary parts, right? So I have minus i, minus i, and 0. And then I have 0, minus 2i, and minus 6i. So I apologize by that. It kind of got all squished into the corner. Uh, I left a, forgot a little bit of space there. And as the last thing I wanted to mention today is kind of what are some of the properties of the conjugate, uh, both on matrices and on vectors. And so I've written the first part. And you should kind of guess what it is before I give you the answer. So if you take a matrix A and you take its conjugate and you take its conjugate again, you should get the matrix A back. 
here it's saying if you first take the transpose of a matrix and take its conjugate, it's the same thing as taking the conjugate of the matrix and then taking the transpose. And multiplication works nice that you can either multiply and then take the transpose, or you could take the transpose of each matrix and multiply. Uh, a vector u by itself really is a matrix, so this should just give me the vector u back. I know it looks a little crazy. There's like three lines above it, but here it is a vector line, and this means conjugate and conjugate. Uh, how does scalar multiplication work? It is take the conjugate of the constant multiplied by the conjugate of the vector u. And when you're adding uh, vectors together, you can first take add them and then take the conjugate, or first take the conjugate and then add them. So today was kind of like a whirlwind discussion of complex numbers. I realized that there are a lot of things going on. Uh, and maybe, hopefully I partially motivated why we want to do this. So next time we want to talk about matrices with complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors to explain kind of what they mean. And there's a bunch of key ideas from today's lecture that you should internalize. You should know what a complex number is. You should be comfortable with the basic arithmetic of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You should know the polar form and be uh, comfortable with some of the geometry involved. So I hope you enjoyed today's lecture and we'll be moving to back to chapter five in uh, the next lecture. Have a great day.